Hello everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And you know, today I wanted to expound upon a, a certain portion of scripture, you know, 32,214 verses in the word of God. And you can actually encourage, exhort, preach, prophesy from every one of those over 32,000 scriptures in the word. So what we want to do is we want to take this text and we want to expound to you something that's going on right now, right? And we're going to, we're going to do that with the help of the Lord. But first, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this beautiful time, God, in your word. Have your way. Move in a special way in our hearts and in our lives, Lord. Let your word speak for itself. <laughs> Uh, you don't need any help, Lord. We just want to lift you up and present Jesus Christ before the people so that they can bow and give you reverence <laughs> like you deserve and glorify you, Lord. For so is the chief end of men, and that is to glorify you. That's what we were built for, for your pleasure. Have your way in Christ's name. Amen. You know... In the word, we see something very, very startling. I mean, in the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 3, verse 33, we see David asking a question and the word of God answering it. Watch this. And the king lamented over Abner and said, died Abner as a fool dieth. Died Abner as a fool dieth. Now we can answer that question without being disrespectful because we're going to be using the word. Let's go ahead and, and give you a little bit of background about Abner, right? Abner was of the old guard, one of King Saul's men. King Saul and his son Jonathan had passed away at this time. And Abner actually appointed another king, the king's son, King Saul's son, Ishbosheth. But I want you to look at the comparison that God made between David's anointing and Ishbosheth's appointing. It was very, very clear, very lucid that Ishbosheth was not the anointed one that was supposed to be ruling in Israel. And yet, he ruled Israel, while David ruled in Judah. The tribe of Judah came up, they anointed him king. Now, God had already anointed him years back. You remember that? But they came up, they anointed him king in the tribe of Judah and just enjoyed his kingdom authority at that time. But Abner, Abner took Ishbosheth, appointed him, and basically became his shadow government, telling him what to do. And as a matter of fact, there came a point in time when Ishbosheth tried to say, What are you doing? Abner was like, Excuse me, kind of sending him a subliminal message, you know. You'd be nothing if it wasn't for me. Have you ever had people uh, kind of do that to you? They kind of control you uh, with their look. Or they may say something like, uh, do you remember where I brought you from? Right? Shadow governments. Dark government. And that's what Abner was to Ishbosheth. And so Ishbosheth, he ruled for seven years. Then there came a time where, you know, God had said, you know, that's enough of that. You know, you're not the rightful king that I placed over Israel. Let me say that one more time. There came a point in time where God said, and there's more than one way to say something. You don't have to say it with your mouth. huh? You can say it with your life. You can say it with events. But God said, that's enough. And it's time for my man, David, to rule. It's time for him to take out giants. 
It's time for him to do all of these things to fulfill my will for this generation. But Abner, Abner, turned his back on Ishbosheth. Sure did. He was a traitor to Ishbosheth, and that's why Ishbosheth actually got mad, and Abner was like, shut up, in so many words. And Ishbosheth had to relinquish the throne. As a matter of fact, some people came in, took off his head. And there was a battle, yes. People lost their lives, yes. But David began to be in his rightful position. Now, Abner, Abner had taken the life of one of Joab's brothers, Asahel. And he didn't want to do it, but he did it. Why? Brothers and sisters, when you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, there are certain events that are set off that you cannot stop. You can't stop it. So that's why it's very important that you get in the place God has you. Get in the place God wants you and stay right there. It doesn't matter if you have to tarry in his presence two, three, four, five hours. Tarry there until God moves you. The need for the hour is to seek God's face. But there's Abner. Abner's right there. And he's saying, you know, um, talking with Joab. And next thing you know, Joab did what? He's the fifth river, isn't he? He took the life of Abner. But remember what Abner did. Remember what Abner did. Abner chose to appoint instead of go with God's anointed. He chose appointed over anointed and got the fruit of that choice. Whenever you choose something other than God, whenever you choose against the Lord's counsel, whenever you choose that, you cannot rightfully be called wise. So, without saying it, let's just say it. Can you choose against the Lord and be counted wise? The opposite would be true, wouldn't you think? And so, did Abner die as a fool? You be the judge? The Bible clearly states the answer. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to take the story of Ishbosheth and apply it into this time. In this time, has there been some people in government positions that are appointed and not anointed? They're in the positions, but somebody wanted them there. They weren't elected, right? Like they were supposed to be. But somebody subverted the system in order for that person to be there. Do you think that will ever end right? Did it end right for Ishbosheth? Did it end right with Haman? All of these hijacked positions, these people, they, they either die or something else terrible happens to them that didn't need to. You know what I mean? And so... Let's pray for our leaders because there's something coming to them. Now, I'm not the one that said it, okay? There's something coming to these leaders that have hijacked these positions that they're not ready for. Neither are their families ready for. And if you want, you can join me right here on my prayer hub, Sierra Vista at awakeningprayerhubs.com. We started a prayer hub right here. You can start yours as well. Just let me know how, you, if you want to know how to start the prayer hub, and we can absolutely help you out with that. You want to be a, you want to join me in prayer for the city of Syria Vista? Please do. God is 
causing revelation on this place, awakening on this place, revival, reformation, and he's just going to repeat it on another level. And it's beautiful, and I just want you to be a part of it, all right? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much. God, there is no one, no one, no one like you. Have your way among the saints. Have your way among all of the leaders of the world. God, cause their heart to repent. And if they don't repent, Lord God, break the teeth in their mouth. Break them, Lord, and have them melt like an untimely birth. Melt like melted wax, Lord, before the presence of the Lord. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. And Father, in, it's in these, all these things, Lord, we are asking you to do in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. God loves you. God smiles and he sees you.